Hello friends, it's good to be with you again. I have a story for you today from the Bible. Now you and I know the Bible is true. Everything in it is true. And the story I have for you today is true. We know the Bible is true because the Bible came from God and the Bible is all about God. Well, today, my story for you comes from the very beginning of the Bible, the first book and the very first verse of the Bible is where we're going to start today. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, from the start, where did it begin? Now, we learned last week, God has always been. God is not like us with a start and a finish. God is always. He always has been and he always will be because he's God. Well, the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created. So let's think a minute. What does created mean? Hmm. Do you and I create things? Yes, sometimes. I can use my colors and a piece of paper and create a picture. I could use some Play-Doh and create something. Sometimes I go in the kitchen and I use different foods and spices and I create a really yummy meal to eat. Maybe I could get some wood and some nails and I could create a birdhouse or build something else. To create means to make, or to build, or to put together. And the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created. Now, when you and I create things, we use our hands. If I'm going to create a picture, I have to use my hands to hold the paper and the crayons and whatever I'm using to create with. If I create dinner, I have to use my hands to cook and to cut and to stir. And if I am going to create a birdhouse, I use my hands to hold the hammer, to hold the nails, to put the wood in place. So when you and I create things, we use our hands. But when we read in the front of our Bible, in the book of Genesis, about God creating, he didn't do it the way we do it. The Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 2, that God spoke and it came into being. God did not have to use his hands to make all the things we're about to learn. God just used his words, his voice. God said it and it happened. Now, wouldn't it be awesome if we could do that? If I could say ice cream and all of a sudden in my hand, I had an ice cream cone. Or if I could say dinner and all of a sudden dinner was just there to be eaten. That's how God did it. Not how we do it, but that's how God did it. So God created the heavens and the earth. So how did he do that? And what did he create when? And what happened first and what happened next? That's what I'm about to share with you. From Genesis chapter one, we learn that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he did his creation in six days. So what did he create first? 
Well, on day one, the Bible tells us that God separated the darkness from the light. So in the beginning, there was just darkness and God created light. He said, let there be light. And there was. And then do you know what God said? God said, it's good. He liked what he had done. That was day one. He created light. Day two. God said, I'm going to separate the waters of the sky from the waters of the sea. And God created the sky and the sea. Day two, sky and sea. He looked at what he'd done and he said, it's good. He liked what he had created. So now we are to day three. On day three, God created the land and the plants. So he separated land from the sea and the water. And then he put all the wonderful plants on it, trees and grass and flowers. Think about how on day three, the world that God was creating was suddenly full of beautiful colors and was suddenly full of mm, such wonderful smells because on day three, God separated the land from the water and put plants on the land. And when God looked at it, he said, it's good. He liked what he was doing. It's good. So now we are to day four. What did God create on day four? The Bible tells us that on day four, God created the sun for the daytime and the moon and the stars to shine at night. So on day four, God separated sunshine and day from darkness and night. And he put the moon and the stars in the sky for us to see at nighttime. When God finished this on day four, he looked at it and he said, it's good. So day five. <gasps> on day five, God filled the ocean with all the different sea animals. The fish, the tiny little guppies, all the way up to the big giant whale, the very fun octopus, all the different sea animals you can think of, God created on day five. And he filled the air with birds. God created the birds from the little tiny hummingbird to the big, beautiful, majestic eagle. On day five, God created the sea animals and the birds. And when he looked at his creation, he said, it's good. So now we are to day six, the last day of his creating. What's left to create? Oh yeah, the land animals. On day six, God created all the land animals. From the tiniest little flea to the big giant elephants. His creativity was so amazing. Think about it. All the different insects like the ladybug, all the fun animals like a giraffe and a tiger, from the slowest animal, the snail or the slug, to the fastest animal, the cheetah. On day six, God spoke 
and all of the different animals came into being. And God looked at what he had done and he said, it's good, but I'm not done today. There's one more thing to be done. And the Bible tells us that after the land animals were created, back in Genesis chapter 1, it tells us in verse 26 that God said, let us make man in our image. One more very special creation to make. And this creation was not going to be like all the other animals. This creation was going to be in the image of God. Now, sometimes at church, you might hear the grown-ups say, Imago Dei. That's fancy words that mean in the image of God. Now, what's an image? Well, an image is something that looks like a person, but isn't the real person. So if I go to my bathroom and I look in the mirror, I see an image of me. It's not really me in the mirror. It's a reflection or an image of me. Right now, when you are looking at your TV or your computer to watch this story, you are seeing an image of me. I'm not really in your computer or in your house telling you the story. You are seeing an image of me. It looks like me. It sounds like me. It acts like me. But it's not the real me. It's an image of me. So the Bible says that God said, let us make man in our image. Now, remember last week, we learned that God is three in one. So in our image, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are working together to make this final special creation, man. Now, there's one more thing that's different about when God created man. Remember, we said all of the other things he created, he just spoke. Sky, sea, sea animals, birds, and there they were. But this time, the Bible tells us in Genesis, he didn't just say, man, and a man appeared. The Bible says not only are we created in his image, but it goes on to tell us that God used his hands to gather the dust of the earth and to form it into man and woman. And after he formed the man, the Bible tells us that he did something else really special. He didn't just say, be alive with his words. No, because remember, we as humans are created in the image of God. And so God not only made us with his hands, but he then breathed his breath into our lungs. When he created that very first man to bring that man to life, he put his life, his breath, into the first man and woman. And he created Adam and Eve on the sixth day. And do you know what else? When he looked at Adam and Eve, that final creation, he looked and he said, it is very good. Not just it's good, but it 
is very good. The creation of man was very good because we are different from animals. We are created in God's image. Imago Dei, that big fancy way of saying, we are created in the image of God. Man is a special creation of God. Now that was the end of day six, and God finished by saying, it is very good. Well, what happened on day seven? On day seven, God just looked at all the things that he had created, at this wonderful new universe where the planet Earth was, where all the animals and the plants and people were, and he rested. On day seven, God rested from all the work that he had done. The Bible tells us that God made everything. Everything. There is nothing from light that lets us see, darkness, sunshine, the moon, the stars, all of the animals, and every human being is made by God. God made everything, and he made it good because God is good, and God loves all of his creation. God made everything. Let's tell God thank you for making such a wonderful place for us to live with so many colors and smells and beautiful things and fascinating things to learn about, so much creativity in God's world. Let's tell him thank you for making a world for us and let's tell him thank you for making us different, for making us in his image. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much that you are a creator and that you are a creative creator and that you gave us such a beautiful, fascinating, wonderful world to live in. And thank you that in the story of creation, you made sure that we would know that we human beings are created in your image. We are created with your life in us because you love us and you wanted us to be here with you. Thank you that you made everything for us to enjoy. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, it was good to see some of you again at church on Sunday, at the church building, I should say. And I hope in the coming weeks that I will see more and more of you getting to come back to the church building with your families. Have a great week. Bye.